Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you a couple of ideas in alchemy. Specifically, I want to um, show you how you can come up with uh, something like this. Right, uh, so that's enough of examples. Um, so to set this up, um, you're gonna have to bear with me for a second. Let's, um, what we're gonna do, it's gonna take a while before we get our first useful result. So let's first initialize this preset, and then um, we have our four sources. Right now we have a saw note by default in source A. Then in my MIDI editor, I just have two long notes that both um, are two bars long. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a drum loop from the browser, something like that. And we'll load that in in uh, granular mode, as you saw. So right now we have some granular controls right here. And then we're going to set up all the all the modulations for one source first before we copy them to other sources. So um, the reason for that is that we don't have to do all of that lots of different times. So by default, the speed is set to 100, which will play back the sample at its original speed. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, control the position control. So if I set the speed to zero, the sample is going to be frozen and we can choose different positions in the sample which is already pretty nice and we're going to link this to an LFO and this is kind of a common thing and this is to control the playback so we'll give the LFO a full amount we'll set it to unipolar so that it uh, spans the whole range and we want to set that to a ramp up shape so right now it's going to take the position from the left to the right and then flip back around. Um, so right now, because the LFO is at a one quarter note, it's going to do that in a very short time. So it sounds a little bit too fast, so let's set this LFO to maybe two bars or one. Let's see. Okay, let's do two bars. All right, um, so we have that, but now what I want since this LFO is now controlling this, I also want a way to switch off that LFO and go into free mode instead. And for this, we're going to use something slightly advanced. We're going to use a mod mapper. So what we're going to do is we're going to reset the depth right here, and we're going to say control that with performance control 4. That's this control right here. So now if I set this all the way up, I can either have the LFO if it's all the way up, or uh, no LFO if it's all the way down because we're controlling the modulation depth. Um, but then what I want to do is I want to set up a mod map here so that if this knob is down instead of frozen, um, we should hear the LFO. So I'm going to choose mod map one for that, and we just need to invert this so that this is basically the range of the knob. And what what we want to do is that. Um, we can think of this like on the on the horizontal axis, that's the range of this knob. So if it's all the way at the left here and this point is very high, it means that the modulation depth is going to be all the way up. Um, but as soon as we set the control here, there's going to be no modulation anymore. So the sound is going to be frozen. So just to demonstrate that, at the beginning we should hear the LFO. But if I set this just a little bit up, the sound is frozen. So now the LFO switch on off happens in this very first range here. And you can see that it says 100% even though the knob is down. And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to assign this same macro control. Uh, to, 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 if, you, if you're not used to this, this might take a while getting used to, but you'll get it. Um, so we'll set up another mod map for this control 4, which we make start a little bit later. So now um, to control the position for the first like what is this 10 percent it's not going to do anything um, but after that it's going to control the the uh, sort of frozen sound so now when it's all the way down we have our lfo and then when we start to increase it we should get a, a frozen sound and we scan through the sample actually of course we need to set the mod depth if we want to do that All 
right? So that's a nice healthy starting point. Then some other control I might want to have is for the, um, what is this? The uh, uh, granular size, which is the size of each grain. We're going to set that to control one, and then we'll set this all the way down. And then we might want one for the density, which is how many grains you're having. So we set that to control two. Uh, for both of that, we need to set your modulation range as well. And then what we could do is set some stereo offset. We have some macros left. Let's set this to um, performance control three. And we give that just a little bit of range. This is just to make it a bit more stereo. <laughs> Um, I need to keep looping. All right, so now we have quite some controls set up, but let's do one more. Let's do the, the tuning. Um, and we'll choose control five for that, and we'll give it a range of maybe 12 semitones. Uh, let's do 24. for some reason that doesn't work so we'll do it like this all right so that's gonna be so we'll say pitch just to make it a little bit simpler grain size names are already pretty good but just to make it extra clear and grain density uh like this one is not what was this again um this one, oh yeah, stereo offsets. Let's do stereo. Position is fine. Position. All right. Um, then, if we now go to this page, what we can see is that um, we have an overview of our sources here. And this dot in the middle is what we're going to hear of all of these sources. So right now we're going to hear 25% um, of all of these sources. It's just the other sources are not enabled. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, first take source A and we're going to say, I think we need to do that here. What is it? Control, Command, click on Mac and we are going to say copy source and then we can paste that here and we can paste that here and we can paste that here. And the nice thing is that right now it has set up all the modulations for all of those. So that's why we did everything with one source first and then copy it to the other sources. So now the only thing we need to do is we'll just take some different drum loops. Right, so now that we have that, we should hear a source here, and then another one here. And with this one, we can hear that the LFO is too quick, so we're going to uh, switch that out with a new LFO. And we'll set that to a ramp up. I told you it will take a while, right? Um, let's set this to four bars then, probably. Yeah, that sounds better. Let's check out source C. That sounds right, and then D. The D is a little bit messed up right now. I think we need a little bit of a quicker LFO for that one. Um, so let's choose a new LFO again, and then we'll set it to ramp up. And then let's try one bar. Yeah, that's fine for me. All right, so now we can actually start to mess around with this. Um, if one last thing we want to do is I'll set this one up to my performance X and Y pad um, one, and then the X axis. That's just this one, and then we'll set this one up to X and Y pad one, the Y axis. So now we can do the same thing that we did here, but then down here, which is nice because this one is always in view and the other one is not. Uh, so let's give that a full amount as well. And let's just mess around with this a little bit.
course, at this point, there's much, much more you can do. Um, you could, for example, do a thing where if you have a melody that's frozen, um, you could add a sequencer to that to create sort of a melody. So we can set a sequencer up to the tuning here. We can give it a range of 12. Um, and then we give it a value snap of 12 as well. That means that these are going to snap to semitones. And we freeze the sound. <laughs> So you could do something like that. Um, another thing that you could do is just control the rate on the on the LFO. So I think we had uh, we used three different ones. So we can set up um, another performance control. Like the performance controls, they're they're incredibly powerful. It's really nice to get some some practice with this. Let's set this to twenty five percent, and we'll do the same for this one. Uh, this was performance control six, I believe, five, six, yes. Uh, set that to 25%. And this is why you want to do all of this earlier so that you don't have to copy this for all the other assignments. So you want to try to get as much modulations down in one source and then just copy them. Um, but just to show you. And the nice thing in Alchemy is once you have a nice set of performance controls, you can right click here on the source and then you can say store snapshot in one. And now you've, you're storing all these knob values um, to one. So you can go to two here and then do something else like set the pitch up and just have a regular loop menu. And then you can store this to two and you can go to three. You can set these, um, you perhaps go there. Um, and you store this one through three and then I mean you get the point um, for this one let's do let's freeze the sound and set the stereo position and set the pitch up and store that one here so now you can just scroll through this to go through various um, variations <laughs> And then you can also take one such as this one and you can store it also in let's say five and then the only thing you change there is freeze it you can also name these uh rename frozen Right, so a uh, cheap way to create a lot of chaos, but you can also use it just for regular drum beats and get some variations on beats, and then you can skip through those variations. So I always like this approach. It makes you come up with um, lots of new sounds very quickly. Right, hope you find that useful. If you do so, please like and, and do all those things, and then I'll see you in a next video. Are you looking for production guidance and direct feedback on your tracks? Do you want one-on-one -on -one help with a mix, music theory, production, or creative workflow? Then book a one-on-one -on -one mentorship session today with one of our knowledgeable industry professionals at Pyramine.com.